little bit. My hair looks a little worked. Yeah. Yay, burp. And it kind of makes it, it's kind of, it's not as bright over here either. But it's just, it's kind of moved just, on to the sky. That's true. Maybe. Well, not maybe that it's true, but maybe that the sky's supposed to move up. So it's moved on to the sky. What? What? Oh, have you ever read this one? That's a number one. I oh, guess no, no, this is the Comfort Golden. Yes. So this is the yes. second series. Yes. All right, so uh, Dark Horse today, Matt Kent and David Rubin. Love the art. Uh, either the Cobbler <laughs> Golem, so if you are either person, she was asked to so we'll look and see what I've named the yes. show. Because I name it weirdly. If you've ever noticed, it's pretty bizarre. Um, so... Great story, kind of picks up. You obviously met the main character. He has a interlude at the beginning with uh, uh, a touchstone onto his past. And then he gets tasked with a new project in the ether, gets sent there. So mm -hmm. if you like that series, totally jump in. I'm going to do one more before you get, guard get started. Jeff Lemire, of course. Mm -hmm. Andrea Sorrentino, the awesome art. Gideon Falls, number three. Uh, the pastor is... A, priest of Gideon Falls is now not in trouble to realize he is not the killer and that it was the old priest that had done the killing um although that was funny I don't even know if they know how he died but anyway hmm. um so you have that mystery to still solve um the black barn has been showing up you find out something uh, about the black barn and its history uh, and the crazy fellow who has been collecting the nails and wood and whatever from probably the barn is what I'm guessing. Uh, his uh, um, uh, doctor, psychologist, uh, had in the last issue seen the barn herself and has now kind of talked to him about it. You get to see all his booby traps and stuff because, you know, he's crazy, so he does crazy booby traps. Getting Falls is awesome. And uh, second prints of number one and number two are also out tomorrow, so you can totally catch up. Third print of number one. Oh, third print of number one. I mean, second you get the third two. prints of things. It's probably pretty good, yeah? Mm hmm Oh, goodness. And the cover is awesome again, because it's like a map of Gideon Falls, but it's like a person. I'm going to do this one. Okay. New Challengers, number one. It's um, My Little Aftermath. Uh, I don't, you don't really see how it's a metal aftermath quite yet, but, um, it's these guys, and they're the new challengers, so they're the most recent group of challengers, um, and they kind of tell you some of the, some of, some of the, um, you kind of see some of the former challengers. But, um, essentially, they're dead, but they're not dead. But if you're in the mountain, you're fine. <laughs> I'm super confused. But it's really, really well written. And the artwork is really good. And, um... Well, it's Gilbert and Snyder, so... Yes. There's that. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. That's cool. I like the guy in the front. Is that the bad guy? I don't, we haven't seen him yet. Oh. It's well, always crazy have, when they know. do, when they show things like that on the cover, and they're like, it may or may not be in this book, ha ha. Alright, um, continuing on with this awesome storyline called Shattered Grid, uh, that Boom has been doing in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, mm -hmm. more development, you find out more about what Lord Dacon's doing, um, and trying to get all the morphers together. Um, the, some of the rangers from different timelines slash dimensions have kind of been able to connect with each other, contact each other. Um, they're all trying to work together to try to figure out a way to the, to keep Lord Dracon to keep on coming and stealing the morphers and using them. And of course, killing the rangers themselves. That's never good. Um, it's a good storyline. I'm liking it. You should probably do another one. What? I should? Okay. I think so. All right. Uh, Scout Comics has got this really awesome yeah. book out called Jazz Legend. I didn't know what to think about it. I ordered it because I was like, well, it looks good. I like reading everything and usually ones that I'm like, eh, about. And yeah, I finally, really good. Like, yeah, I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So if you like jazz, uh, you'll see some of that kind of like 
weird prose in here, which I really love. Um, yeah. Basically story about a, a jazz club that has a trumpeter that he plays every single night. There's a lady who runs the club who um, she doesn't really care what he's up to the rest of the time as long as he shows up and does it. Um, it's got mob people in it and kind of some weird trippy stuff that happens when he takes some drugs. It's just full of all kinds of craziness. But I really love it. It looks good. It really, it really the is The artwork good. looks great. And as always, Scout was, has like was, really great yeah. weight uh, paper. It feels like a million bucks. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I got a little curious when I was bagging one. Like, yeah. I, I took a peek and it looks great. Purple with All right. Uh, Superman special, Escape from Dinosaur Island. So this one has three stories in it. Did they have Dinosaur Island stuff before? Is this like yeah. the first time we've seen it? Um, a way, way long time ago in in uh, Superman uh, 8 and 9, 7 and 8. So within the Rebirth? Yeah, so okay. through, within the Rebirth stuff. Okay. At the very beginning. Um, so it's been a while. Um, it's really, really good. I don't really want to say too much about it because... Um, so there's three complete there's different three, stories? There's three different stories. Okay. Um, each one is, is a different art style. Each one is a different, um, completely non-related story. Um, and I love, I love each individual story. They're really, really well written. And I gotta say I love things a lot, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's If you like Superman, it's a must-have. Ooh. Cool. All right, and my last independent for today, uh, Aftershock has got this really great book now. Uh, this cover is different than the one you're going to find at regular shops. Um, sorry, this is a variant cover that we love very much because it's raising money for charity. So this is a walk through hell which is a Garth Ennis book. Mm -hmm. um, he's done other series with Aftershock before. He did the Dreaming Eagles, and uh, he's currently doing Jimmy's Beaters with them. So all very different genre for him. This is like psychological horror, um, X-Files, mm, uh, LAPD SWAT mm -hmm. stuff. So it's kind of a weird mixture of things, but it's it's such a great setup for a story. The SWAT team shows up to go into a warehouse and whatever they've seen there is so terrifying that the rest of the part of the book has ramifications for that. You really don't leave anywhere except for the FBI guys that get sent in uh, and the SWAT guys' reactions to it that have been in there and come out. So really not for kids, really scary. <laughs> Lots of scary imagery and blood. Yeah. The cover will tell you that when we chose. So uh, this is uh, the and book you know that it'll be mirrored. Learned. We'll we'll have it. Oh yeah. Um, so this is a book that raises money for. I'm sorry, it's backwards, everyone. This is the <laughs> Bink Charity. It's a book industry charitable foundation that does a lot for um, bookstores, including regular old comic book stores. Yes. So um, you can find they these. Do a lot. They do a lot. Yeah, you can find these online. So yeah, um, this is a very limited series of four hundred covers for this one. Yeah, but in it's any case, nice, go it's a nice find. Cover. It's so pretty. Um, go and find a copy of the regular book. There's also a really cool black cover, just completely black. Mm -hmm. It looks like a black poly bag, but it's not. It's just black cover. Yeah, and I think there are a couple, a couple other versions of the cover which are neat too. So it's a really cool book, but don't read it right before bed. No, no. Mm -mm. Or if you do, leave enough time to read <laughs> this one. Yay! Flavor! I left that for you because I was 100% certain that you wanted to read it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, so it's about this girl. Her name is Zoo, spelled X-O-O. -O. Ooh, I right? like that. Right? It's a cool name. Write that down in your baby book And this is, this is her dog, Buster. Oh, and uh, is the art for the book like that too? Yeah, the art for the book is just I like, like this. It. And um, she is an underage, unlicensed chef that has a restaurant, which is illegal where she lives. And um, which is where 
on our planet or no? Uh, it's a weird town. It's a weird city that is walled in and um, kind of found out why at the end, but Ooh. I'm not going to say anything. Okay, but so she, that's part of the whole She no longer, thing. yeah, she's been out of school for six months. She just kind of quit to take care of her parents who um, can't take care of themselves. And um, I'll be back for more. Yeah. And this in the background is her uncle. And um and then you see the uh, the guys that are like the you can't see them, but um, if you look up the cover, if you come pick one up, because it's really, really good, um you get you see these guys that are taking care of they're kind of like the the police officers and they're kinda creepy they're kinda creepy looking, but it's just their their uniforms have like this weird mask that kind of looks weird, um, but she's breaking all sorts of rules and uh, you find out why she doesn't want to break the rules, but she has to. So yeah. it's really bad that she's breaking the rules if she gets caught though. So uh oh, <laughs> living on the edge. Yes, but right. from what I can tell, she's a really good chef. So now I'm hungry. All right, uh, Hunt for Wolverine. You were hungry the before. The third of four <laughs> mini series that are part of it. Yes. Uh, this is the Claws of a Killer. So this is going to be the mini series that has to do with the Hunt for Wolverine from his kid's point of view. <laughs> so, and well, and same dude. But you've got taken. <laughs> I was gonna say. I'm like, I know. Sorry, and Gabby. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, there was rumors for a long time they're actually related, and who knows? Maybe they are. Uh, they're the same exact healing factors, and I don't know. Anyway. This uh, is true. This is very true. <laughs> so Dakin, you know, still wants to kill his dad, but he wants to make sure he's dead. Gabby's not far behind him, so, like, no one really in this book likes Wolverine at all, although they're all... So they're hunting for him to kill they're him. They totally want to find him, make sure his body is found and that he's really, really dead. So that's well, what this, I hope this story fail. is about. What? Okay. <laughs> And what's so funny? At least it? in the killing him part. Yeah. And they don't even care about old man Wolverine. They're just like whatever. <laughs> they want they want regular Logan dead. Oh man. Okay, so this is number two of Harley Quinn. Harley loves Joker. It's Aww. a two part series. I didn't realize that until I already had picked it up. But um, this is the conclusion. And Harley. Oh goodness, Harley. <laughs> Really? That's all I have to say, really. It's Harley Quinn. Is this a real? Is this a love story, or is this? This not? is. So, and she's confused herself because she goes Aren't when she's when she's under stress or just you know when she's spaced out. She's actually in her head, just talking to herself, talking to her Harley and her sane mm -hmm. version of herself, and um, you see a lot of that. But also. Um, you know, the Joker and her are not getting so much along in this book, although they were in the first issue. Um, but Joker says he has a plan. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I, I hope there's more to this. Um, yeah. Yeah, I hope there's more. <laughs> I know it's only, it says a two-issue miniseries, but... That doesn't mean they'll start another yeah. series with if it. If they so. like it enough, they'll figure out a way to get it to yes. live again. All right, um, so Infinity Countdown's been going yes. on. I think we're up to number three of the main book. Um, this is, uh, just like Adam Warlock had its own little, like, jump-in part, this is yeah. the one for Daredevil. Um, you need to know about these little jump-in spots. Let's just imagine that they had more information than they could, more information than they could fit in between you know, three okay. and four or whatever. Okay. And they needed to tell a sub story that's kind of happening alongside um, those. So, so like the Black Widow one and and the other characters, the these are just gonna be like more information, but the, it all happens at the same time. Well, this one you find out about a specific stone. So oh, okay. Uh, you find out about uh, this is a side character that's been around for a while but hasn't been addressed for a long time. They're going to introduce him in like the, the introductory mm. pages so you can know who he is in the history of awesome. the Daredevil world. But um, he has he's trying to take over for where Kingpin left off because you remember Kingpin's off doing his own thing now. Yes. 
Um, and so uh, he's determined to take over the underworld of, of uh, you know, Hell's Kitchen. Okay. <laughs> um, and Daredevil doesn't want that to happen. So this is kind of their interaction. But you find out there's one of the Infinity Stones in the center of it, uh, which this gentleman has picked up, which is why he has power now, even though he had, he's kind of like a, an underling normally. So this is good, important for the storyline, so you know where the stone is, because you're going to need them all when we get to the, you know, the big crux of Infinity Countdown. And by the way, Infinity Countdown is count, counting down to an actual large event. So this is like an event leading to an event. So if you're just kind of waiting around to see how it resolves, that's fine. But come on for the ride. No justice. Number two. Mm-hmm. What I like about these books is they always have the wraparound covers, so... Oh, I didn't notice that for uh -huh. the first one. Yeah, so for the for for each team, they've had a wraparound cover, because mm. um, there's four of them. So the first one had um, the... Uh, was, which team was it? The one that Superman is on, and I can't remember the names of them. I know it's Mystery, Entropy, Wonder... And wisdom, but I don't remember. I don't remember which one was on the first one. But this one's, this one has a focus on entropy on the on the cover, um, and you find out more about why they're on these teams, because they find out why they're on these teams. And Amanda Waller, you messed up. <laughs> that girl messed up all the time. Yes, but this is the biggest mess up I've ever seen that she's ever done. Now, is this clear? Is, is this a clear bridge between the um, the metal storyline, metal storyline, and, and the New Justice League number one that's coming? Yes, yes. Okay. This is this. They've said that this is the bridge in the back of the in okay. in in the. It wasn't No Justice. It was the DC Nation, I believe. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. they had a little interview and said that this is the bridge to that. Okay, so there you so, go. It's written by Snyder, so it makes all yes. the sense in the world that it would Antinian, be Antinian. Yeah, it's yeah. It seems like a little notebook that you guys get it, huh? You might want to, you might miss, but don't because if, you, Please if do you're not, a DC person, you're gonna jump in for the big. You will be missing out. Match. Yeah, you will be missing out big time. It's important. All right. All right. Um, oh, it's hard to decide. Oh, this I'll, one's... I'll do this one just because first because I want to oh. say, um, the Avengers number two book that's out this week. Don't wait too long to go get it. Like, if you're a weekend person, you're going to mm -hmm. go get it later. Call your shop and make sure that they put it in your poll or something. Because mm -hmm. um, the, the amount that was orderable online disappeared quickly, like, as much as two weeks ago. So, um, yeah. trying to have enough for pull boxes alone is going to be difficult. It so, in the case of uh, my local shop, me, yeah, we, are. Uh, we don't have anything for the rack. Because everyone added it to their pull box sure. because they realized that it was amazing. And there's no resolution for that until they make a second print of number two. Yes. So don't wait too long to get this book yes. because it's really good. Uh, so the Avengers storyline has to do with these things. The Well, he's some other creature, but he's definitely of the Celestials mm -hmm. variety. Uh, when last we saw them in issue number one, there were a bunch of Celestials, dead Celestials, falling from the sky. And then this dude shows up. And he's huge and gigantic, and it looks like... Uh, all kinds of crisis is going to happen for our, our team. So, um, Jen Waters is, figures in big to this book. We've got our Hulk appearances. And you've got your main three. So you're starting to see your main team that you love coming back. So you have Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America working together again. They're on the cover, too. Yep. And there they all are. So this is and a big Captain setup. Marvel. And also in this book, uh, you're going to see some... Regular Ghost Rider action, Robbie Reyes. So oh yay! He gets to talk about smack. Cool. So that. Right. he was in Daredevil, which is possible. I read them too closely together, so he could all do right. it. So it's, it's on. It's on. It's on. Is it like Donkey Back. Kong? No. Oh. No. Um. <laughs> oh man, this one. There was, there, there's, there's some twists in here that were just, there's just emotion, so much emotion in this book. Mm -hmm. Um, this is Batman number 47, The Gift. Uh, and on the cover, I know it's backwards for you, so I'm gonna just tell you. It says, for my parents to live, I must kill Booster Gold. What? Um, 
I mean, they're already I, dead. I, hey. I, I get it. You don't like Booster, but come on, that's a little that's a little bit extreme. But I mean, I see where you're coming from, especially after the last couple issues. Well, wrap um, your mind around this. If he saves his parents, then his origin story is messed up. There's no reason for him to be Batman. Exactly, but he doesn't. There's still a Batman. It's just not. It's just not um, Bruce Wayne. Um, and that's what we've seen. Mm -hmm. But uh, this. So this is a flash forward to a year into the into the future. So this is a year after that had after um, after that happened, and um, like Booster Gold back goes back to um, now giving. Uh, Bruce Wayne and his parents back. Um, yep. So now this is a year and he has been imprisoned by Bruce Wayne, of course. Um, because of what he did. And, um... Which is funny, to be imprisoned by something, that, about something that you meant for good. I know. So well, mean. it's so booster. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but you find out some more things about Booster Gold. Um about his thinking of it. Um, and Booster's gone a little bit crazy being locked up. So, it, I laughed and wanted to cry at the same time. Oh, goodness gracious. The cover's gorgeous, by the way. I, I like this one, too, though. You like this one? Okay. Uh-huh. I like that one, but I really like this one. So this is also one of those books that but you just... might think about not picking up tomorrow, but you would be wrong about your thought process. Because this is a little bridge book between the very end of the Mighty Thor, in which we saw Jane Foster meet her end slash not meet her end. Yeah. Um, pick up that book if you have missed 705 for three. <laughs> just go get it because it's really, really good. Yeah. She does give her life, by the way. Um, but things happen afterward in the other realms that change everything. So um, this is a little one-shot book. Uh, and this one is called Mighty Thor number one, but it's called The Gates of Valhalla. Um, it actually really isn't very much about her. It's actually more about the, these three women uh, that are in the far future called the goddesses of Thor. Uh, and they are the granddaughters of old man Thor. Yeah. You, see, you see him a little bit. They like... I don't want to tell you they do. They, I think they get him drunk so they can go run away in time. Because they went to go find her, um, just to meet her. But they mess up and go through time and accidentally end up with other Thor parts. So you get to see Frog Thor. Yes, and you get to see I me. love Frog Thor. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's a good trump through time, but it also gives you a chance to think about what it means to be Thor. And so uh, they eventually do find her and get to talk to her. Um, and that part's very heartwarming and cool so this one's really good and then it kind of like leads you up to like the fact that you it, it is the bridge book it leads directly into thor number one which will be uh we'll get odin's son back but we don't know how he definitely doesn't have the hammer yeah he's got something else so don't miss it and our artwork is so good on this cover mm -hmm. oh yeah all right did i did i, did I wrap it up yeah you did <laughs> That's it. Oh, and I wanted, wanted to show something first, just so that you guys know that I actually do read your stuff. I have a bunch of stuff that's sitting around that yeah. I need to read that have been given to me by very sweet people uh, that I totally intend to Oh, yeah. Talk about All right, that. so The Path it's the, that has been given to me. Uh, Life Formed, I'm totally going to read. This is from an independent uh, group. This is Matt and Cassie. Uh, so Matt Mayer Lowry and Cassie Anderson have made this amazing book and I'm totally gonna read it. I'm gonna review so you guys can get a chance to see that. And then this awesome two-part graphic novel book called Runners that I received that in the mail. So good. One of my employees has got to read it and it's been in my pile of when I have two yeah. seconds. So Sean May, thank you. I'm totally gonna read these and review them. I will be posting up my reviews about those. I really do appreciate you guys spending time and energy to send those to me and they're not ending in a, p a pile somewhere that are not being paid attention to so all right everybody uh oh i'm wearing my deadpool shirt because deadpool is upon us i'm wearing my aaron burr yeah sir burr, sir a uh, dot burr. yeah so uh go find a comic shop near you and go pick up some deadpool merch 
Um, and I saw a little post that said that for some crazy reason, Deadpool has taken over a whole bunch of movies at the movie store that are not his. So go see if you can find these, because it kind of sounds awesome. <laughs> All right, everybody, comicshoplocator.com to go find a place near you. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. We love you. <laughs> how, does, how does that pop up if you're I don't, in and it charging? It doesn't make a bit of sense to me either. Is it charging, though? <laughs>